Hi, today we're in Jordan and we've got one week of bird photography. Now I've never been to Jordan before but I've been to Israel a couple of times and I've been to the Oman as well, all in the Middle East and they were both fantastic for bird photography. I'm expecting this to be a typical habitat, it's a desert but it's not a sandy desert, it's a rocky desert but it should be good for car window photography. I'm expecting to take almost every picture from the car. To support the lens at the car window, I need a bean bag, which I brought with me empty. I go into the first food shop I see, I buy some mineral water and some biscuits for emergency and a packet of rice. And that's what I fill the bean bag with. I like a bean bag to be heavy. And you can just throw the rice away at the end of the trip. So one bean bag, I've tried various things for supporting my camera when I'm shooting from a car window and I still find a bean bag the best. I've tried the various mounts, they just don't work for me. But this sort of goes on the door and because of the shape of the bag, sort of a V shape there, grips the door a little bit, gives you a nice solid platform. You can even wind the window up and it will grip the glass so you can change the height a little bit too. And since the hire car I've got for this trip is a red one, we'll talk about red cars. 20, 30 years ago there was a very widespread belief amongst bird photographers that a red car was a disadvantage. It tended to scare the birds away. It's not a belief I ever had, I didn't think it made any difference, but it was a very common subject that bird photographers talked about. I haven't heard it being discussed in recent times, but say 20, 30 years ago, a very common belief. What does make a lot of difference is the height of the vehicle. The taller your vehicle, the less close you tend to get to birds. They're more intimidated by a large vehicle than they are a small vehicle. So the lower the better. So in the years when I had small motor caravans, I was always at a disadvantage for car window bird photography. You just didn't get so close. Now this was a bit of luck, this was ideal for bird photography. I'm driving along a main road and suddenly realise that to the right there's the old version of this road running parallel to the main road. It's Highway 5 leading to Iraq and there's lots of lorries on it. But not this side road, it's empty of traffic and in places the road disappears and then reappears again. But from a bird photography point of view, wonderful, because I can just pull up wherever I want, there's no traffic. And here's my first subject, a crested lark. Not the most exciting bird to photograph, very common in Europe. You get to photograph them quite readily from cars. And a very distinctive song. You tend to hear them singing first that draws your attention to the fact there is one. I only use the one lens throughout the trip, which is the OM 150 to 400 mil, sometimes with the 1.4 extender on and sometimes with the built-in 1.25. And a white capped black wheat ear. This bird was not very approachable. When I was about 50 meters away from it in the car, it still flew away from me. Sometimes when you're having problems getting close to a bird, it's worthwhile stopping the photography and just spending time as close to the bird as you can without moving it and just get it used to your car being in the environment. And it's amazing how quickly birds get used to things. After just 10 minutes of just staying reasonably close to it, it's become used to the car. It's accepting the car being here and now as I'm moving up to it, I'm getting noticeably closer. You can see the traffic moving on Highway 5 in the background and also that it's rather windy and wind is not very good for this sort of photography. It makes the birds look unbalanced. They are struggling themselves in the wind. For stills photography, the shutter speed that I'm using here is almost irrelevant. It could be five hundredths of a second, five thousandths of a second. You're not going to notice any difference. Aperture wise, it's wide open and that's really to throw the background out of focus as much as possible. In this picture there is a catch light in the eye, that's very important, especially when you have a black bird with a black eye, you really need a catch light. 
Quite an awkward desert even to walk across, let alone drive, but there are places where you can take the car off that tarmac track and get out into the desert. The floor is very hard, it's rock hard, there's no chance of the car getting stuck here. And I'm very aware these days of avoiding any soft sand. I'm getting too old to get the car stuck. When I was photographing this bird I thought shore lark. But as I was photographing I, I started to think no this is not a short lark. This is that other bird that looks like a shore lark. But I wasn't certain and I had to wait until I got the bird book out afterwards to see that this is a Temenix lark. A new bird for me, never seen one, never photographed one. The common name is a bit confusing with this species. It's called the Temenix lark or the Temenix horned lark. And our shore lark, the European shore lark, is called the horn lark in North America. And some people would like to split a lot of them and have about five different species. At times this little side road would lose the tarmac but it was still very solid and very easy to drive along. This is a morning wheat ear. This is Azraq, one of the few wetland areas in Jordan and supposedly the highlight of the trip. It was actually very disappointing. I photographed a grey heron sitting on a fence and water buffalo which are very domesticated and been introduced into the reserve to help preserve the habitat. And not something I was that excited about photographing. But otherwise Azraq from a photographer's point of view just was not worth the visit. It's now the end of the day, heading back to the hotel. I feel a bit disappointed. I've been trying to work out how many species I photographed and I think it was four. But then as I'm driving along I think four species in one day. If I did that at home I'd be delighted. I'd be having a, a great su successful day. Somehow when you come abroad your expectations are higher and you expect to do more photography. And some of the photographs I take today I think were quite good. So as I turned and headed back towards the hotel, I was impressed by the lorries going past the setting sun and it reminded me of some pictures I took some years ago in the Oman where I had camels against the sunrise. This is the Arabian or single humped camel that we also get in Jordan and these are the pictures from the Oman and as I'm thinking about them I thought it would be very nice to redo these because these were taken on slides, these are slide scans. It would be very nice to do these pictures again in Jordan with a digital camera. So from now on I'm going to start looking out for camels and sunsets and sunrises and see if I can get the two to come together, which is not an easy thing to do. Thanks for watching.